everybody, it's Cindy the Scrapologist. I'm here today playing around with my sewing machine. I'm working on this journal that's going to be in my Etsy shop soon and um, I'm just really in the mood for sewing today and messing around with my sewing machine. The, the machine is still a little new to me so I'm having fun with it. It's just kind of what I'm in the mood for today and I thought well while I'm doing this why don't I go ahead and make a video and give you some ideas of what you can do if you want to sew or incorporate sewing into your junk journals or mixed media projects. I think it's nice sometimes to have everything all in one spot instead of if you're looking for ideas instead of having to go and watch 10 gazillion YouTube videos or go through um, sit go and go through Pinterest and then you end up getting distracted well if you're like me you end up getting distracted and you could spend hours doing that and so the purpose of this video is just to have a whole bunch of ideas in one video you can pause it run over to your sewing machine and go and try it you know press play again when I get to the next page run over and try it I don't know I just I hope that that will be helpful to have a bunch of ideas in one spot Certainly none of these ideas are my invention. They're just kind of in my repertoire, things that I, things that I do or things that I've thought of um, as I'm l going for a certain look. But I'm sure that there are lots of people that are using the same techniques, so I'm not um, laying claim to any of these. Just trying to get a whole bunch of ideas into one, one go-to video for you. So um, anyway, that's the idea, and I hope that, I hope that, you, enjoy, that you enjoy it. So um, let me pull these pages out. None of this is attached in yet. But let me just quickly go through some ideas for you. So the one thing that's really fun is to play with a variety of stitches. Let me zoom in. Okay. There we go better. So I like to play with a variety of stitches. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to have one color on top of the machine with my major thread and then I like to have a second color with my bobbin um, so that when you flip the page you get a second color which is kinda nice. I didn't do that for this particular book. I'm just using brown because I wanted this journal to be able to be um, masculine for a masculine gift if you have a writer or artist in the family and so I, I went with brown. So one of the first things that I did here was I just took some cheesecloth and sewed it on really messily and what I'll do is a little later I'll go through and kind of shred shred the cheesecloth and I used a pretty stitch for that kind of a floral stitch but on the back it's a different it's a different stitch so sewing cheesecloth on the end and it looks really nice when you do that in your book I like the way it looks when it's sort of hanging out of the book especially you know, picture it all messy like this, and I I will um, stain this as well. Just I just use my Tim Holtz vintage photo and and stain it. But I like I like putting a, throwing a little bit of cheesecloth in. What else did I do? Let's see. Okay, so this here, this is some vintage ledger paper. And so if you want to make this, what you do is you measure twice the width of your book. You know what? Let me get a piece. Hold on. Oh, that must have made a nice noise. Sorry about that. I dropped you in the trash can. <laughs> I forgot that the microphone part was still stuck to my um, my belt loop. <laughs> and I threw you in the trash on my way over there. Sorry. Um, 
Okay, so to make this, uh, I'm not going to give measurements and details. I'm just really trying to show you ideas as to as to what you can do. But you measure twice the width of your book and then just fold it in half, fold your paper in half, not all the way to the edge. And that's all I did. And then I sewed. Oh, I did round my corners. And then before you unfold, you have to unfold it to sew this first edge if you want a decorative border here. And then fold it back up, fold it up, and I sewed around the edge there. And then when you put it in your book, it's it looks like this on one side, and then you have a little pocket on the other. You can do this technique with scrap paper, with you know, with any kind of paper, obviously. But I like to do that a lot. What else did I do? This is just another decorative stitch that I was playing with, with some cheesecloth. Looks like that on one side, and it looks like this on the other. You can take any kind of any kind of ribbon or trim and sew it on. And I like to sew it so that a little bit is hanging off the edge so that when you flip it to the other side you have some decoration there too. For this I just took a piece of burlap trim that I had and I just sewed it onto the page. So you've got that on one side and you have the little piece of trim on the other. With the little undercut pages, sometimes I like to take just a little piece of scrap something or other and sew it on and I really like this stitch. This is a piece of ledger paper, which which I like because if it gives you your if you're bullet journaling or something, you've got a nice area for lists there, and you've also got a tuck spot. So take anything that any kind of scrap that looks nice and just sew it on. And I really like it on under. I like to do that on undercut pages. It gives gives it a little more interest. Let's see. And over here, I took a piece of scrap that I had, I rounded the edge, and then I sewed down, oops, sorry, down one side and across the bottom, and now you have a nice little pocket. I do have one stitch that wraps around the paper, and I like, I like to do that every once in a while wrap it around. So that kind of gives the bottom a nice decoration. What else have I done? There's another one where I just sewed. I, uh, there's a stitch I like and I just sewed down the, the coffee stain paper. And I really like this stitch. Here's another undercut page. And I took a, this is a card from a, a vintage car, uh, vintage game. It's, I think it's kind of like a Monopoly game. And I sewed it onto a piece of canvas, um, burlap. It's just an undercut page. And that's all I've done so far in this book. I've brought my um, Paris album too because I did a lot of sewing in this one. This one's available in my shop and I've, I've shown you this before. But it had a couple of other, a lot of, lot of um, trim, decorative trim. 
but I also sewed some tags that are put on here with a little paper clip. So I sewed around all four corners and put a little piece of trim on the bottom. And let's see. Here I sewed a pocket, but I actually did the sewing before I put this down. So this is on with double sided tape on three sides, but it looks like it's sewn right onto the book. So if you have a bunch of square scraps like this that you like, I liked this one because it already had some sewing on it. So I took a bunch of scraps from this line and just sewed around the edges one day. And then I um, glued a button and a piece of burlap on it. And there's a map of Paris in there. This is another style of the page that I showed you where you fold it over and then sew it. But on this particular one, what I did was I took a piece of scrap paper and I just folded over one side like this. Took a whole, uh, my rounder punch, punched here, and then sewed it this way across the top and across the bottom and then you end up with this. See, I sewed across the top. I did not sew down here, but you can. It just, you won't have as wide of a pocket. And then I sewed across the bottom. And then, uh, so what the other side looks like is this. That's a really nice technique for double-sided uh, scrapbook paper. Let's see if I did anything else that I should show. This is just another little piece of scrap that I had that was a rectangle and I sewed I sewed around it and then then put it in the journal. Another piece of trim. This is, let's see another pocket that again when I was sitting and having when I had all these scraps these square and rectangular scraps I just sat and sewed sewed borders on them one day so that's another one that I put in here with double-sided tape but it looks it looks nice because it, it looks like it's sewn in but it's really not on this one I sewed on on one side, I have this yellow um, trim. On the other side, I have this piece of scrapbook paper w that I used my Florida de lis edge punch with. And so when I, and I sewed both down. So when I sewed this down, I sewed the trim on one side and this paper on the other. So the paper on the other side becomes becomes a tuck spot. So think about what you want your opposite side to look like when you're sewing. And that might be it. That's just another, another piece of scrap that I had sewn a, a border around. And I think that's it. Let's see if I've got anything else over in my pile. I've been doing a lot of sewing lately. Here's a couple of other things that I've done. This is a um, it was just a piece of scrap. Whoops, I guess it goes that way, sorry. And what I did was I sewed an old piece of dictionary paper to the top of this. I sewed it, and then after I did the sewing, 
I tore the dictionary page off. So you still get a little bit of the dictionary paper there and you can see some of the words and you get a little bit of the paper and I really like the way that 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 turns out when I do that and then I will either I'll put this in a journal probably as a pocket. This is another scrap that I had that was thin and I did my Florida Lee punch and then I just sewed down the side of it to make a pocket, a tuck spot, which I showed you this earlier. And then the back looks really pretty too because this is this is hanging off the back. And then I had a piece of scrap left over from that blue paper and I sewed across, um, first I sewed across the bottom of two sides and then I sewed them together at the top and what this ends up being is um, this can be a nice bookmark for your journal. Okay. And this is just another, I like to do this a lot. With, if I have really nice double-sided scrapbook paper, this is just another, what I already showed you, where you fold it over and then you sew across three sides, or like I said, four sides if you want to, if you want, don't want as deep of a pocket. And I made one more too. I really like when I have scrapbook paper that has a stripe. For, for some reason I like doing this with it because I like the striped pocket in contrast to this, um, the paper with the images on it. So that's just another one. And let's see, I think that's, oh, one more thing. Well, no, a couple more ideas. Um, for this I took, this is a wider piece of trim and I sewed it on this side and so this makes a really nice little, little tuck spot and it gives you, I did a terrible job sewing on this one <laughs> but it gives you um, some an element of interest on the opposite side too. And then on this one I just folded a doily over and sewed it on. This is one where I did have white on the top, white thread on the top and brown in my bobbin. So there's the brown and then there's the white. And I like that because now each side is different. And there's some, just another one I did, white, brown with a zigzag this time. And then I have some quilting squares that, that I found and um, sometimes I like to just fold those over can fold them over the triangular like this or fold them over you know the regular way square and I sew it to the edge this time I used a zigzag sew it to the edge I had white on one side and brown on the other and now you've got a nice little tuck spot that you can put something under on this one by the way, I, I'll link the video down below. Actually, these ones that I'm showing you now, I did do a tutorial on. And I, I will, um, I'll link the video below. But again, I wanted to get all these ideas onto one video for you. This one, I just took a whole bunch of stuff. A scrap paper, a piece of a doily, a piece of some thread, fuzzy thread more scrapbook paper, some handmade handmade linen paper, and I just sewed it all on.
and I think that's kind of fun. I like the way it turned out. And again, because I've got the brown on the other side, it gives you a nice element of interest there. And on this one, I have a tiny um, Sizzix. It's only like this big. And one of the dies is, is a button. So I took some scraps and punched out a variety of buttons and sewed them down the edge. You could do this with any punch you have. You could do circles, you could do butterflies, you could do any little images that you have. And again, brown on the other side. And this is just a piece of washi tape just stuck on and then I sewed down it to give to give it a an, in, an element of interest on the edge of the paper. So it's just washi tape that I sewed on. So that is everything. There that was a lot of ideas I hope for you ton of ideas. <laughs> um, that's my favorite one, I think. I'll, maybe I'll, I think I'll put that in this journal, actually. It'll go, go really nicely in there. So I hope that that helps kind of having a whole bunch of ideas in one place. Let me know. Uh, is there anything else you want me to do? Any other videos you'd like me to make to, to try to consolidate things so you're not having to sit and be on the computer all day? You can actually be in your craft room creating and make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss any of my videos and please hit the thumbs up and the like and give me a comment and all those cool things i would love to hear from you and thank you again for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye